This is my battery operated um, beard trimmer. It runs on two AA batteries. It works fine. Um, I just put rechargeable AA batteries in it so that when the batteries are flat I can recharge them. But it's a pain in the ass to charge these batteries each time. And I would really like it if I could simply charge the batteries inside the device. Modify it so that you have a USB phone charger. Just plug straight into it. That'd be really handy. So that's what we're going to try and attempt. So the first thing we need to do is determine the polarity. So let's uh, let's give it some juice. Okay. So this one here is the positive. So let's solder some red and black wires on there just to make it easy for us. So I'm just going to throw a bit of solder on there so it makes it easier for us to solder. And uh, maybe I'll bend them down as well. It's easy to throw the wires on. I've also thrown a bit of solder on these um, on these wires. Now I've determined uh, that is the positive and that's the negative. And it's bridged on that side, so it's bridged um, basically 3 volts. This should be 1.5, but I think these are um, alkaline batteries, so they're about 1.2 volts. But let's call it 3 volts. And um, see if we can attach some wires there. I don't know what kind of metal that is, but hopefully we can solder onto that. So that'll be the positive and that'll be the negative. I've added a little bit of solder flux to the tip of the solder, so hopefully that'll do a good job of making it, the solders flow more easily if I try and solder it on here. Well, that flows nicely. Come on, soldering iron. So now we need to decide what kind of circuit we're going to use for the charging. So I was thinking, let's keep it really simple. All we need is some current limiting in the form of a resistor. I think this is complete overkill. We might use a smaller resistor, but we can we can use the bigger one. This is 10 ohms. And uh, a diode, um, which would give us two purposes. It, it allows nothing to feed back into the USB. And it gives us about a half a volt, about 0 0.6, 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 volt volt drop. So it means uh, our 5 volt supply will drop about 0 0.6 volt. So we'll just have just something over 4 volts and a bit of current limiting. And the good thing about um, these um, nickel metal hydrate is um, that they're they're quite resilient to overcharging. They're, they're nothing like um, lithium batteries that need a very precise um, charging that they cut off at a certain voltage, uh, they can't undervolt. These are very forgiving. You can just limit the current to them and they can happily be trickle charged for quite a long period of time without damage. So that's all we really need. We need some current limiting so that it just slowly trickle charges the batteries and we'll drop a bit of the voltage down with a diode as well. And I think that's it. That's going to be our charging circuit. Really simple. So I was thinking this resistor is just a little bit too big. It's it's not necessary. As if we change the value to 15 ohm, we'll have 100 milliamps of current, which is really, really, it's nothing really. So um, I was thinking our diode could go here and the resistor could go here and then we'll sleeve it with some heat shrink sleeving and then attach it to these wires here. The diode has to go on first. Our resistor. There we go. 
Try and shrink that one. There you go. Let's see if the lid still goes on. Right. So I think uh, we can pretty much just connect them here and then we can make the hole for the USB charging socket somewhere in here and hopefully we can maneuver it in there. It looks like it's going to be quite a tight fit. It might actually be easier to do it straight down. There we go. Shrink it down with the heat shrink. Lovely. So I think it's time for the trusty Dremel so we can uh, make the hole for the USB socket. So you have to excuse the noise. I might speed up the video so you don't. Uh, if you've got headphones on so it doesn't mess up your ears. So I think all we need to do now is pot that in with a bit of hot melt glue. Um, I've shielded the edges here with uh, a bit of insulation tape because from my experience sometimes hot melt glue gets stuck to the bits you don't want it to get stuck to so I just masked it up with a bit of insulation tape so let's hope for the best let's uh, see if we can get that in there nicely Right, make sure it doesn't come out the bottom. So we should just let that cool nicely. And I think our USB socket, micro USB should plug in nicely. Right, that's set nicely now. Um, so we've potted this in with hot melt glue. This is our USB micro USB charging socket. We can plug in a standard micro USB and as you can see there, it just goes in rather nicely. And I think the lid should just fit on perfectly as well. There you go, should be charging. Ready to use. Stick it on charge. Lovely. Things worthy of note. The diode has polarity, so we want we want the charging current to flow from here into there so that it feeds into the battery. Because this is a positive, so the little white stripe of the diode is there, so the diode has to be pointing that way. The resistor doesn't matter, the resistor just limits the current. So I thought I'd give these, this little USB socket a mention. It's, uh, it's 
the through hole component type, it's not surface mount, and it's only got two pins. They excluded the data pins, so it's purely for powering things. So it's only to get the 5 volts for things like charging or powering things. So it makes it very easy to use because the connections are further apart and it's easier to solder. And I'll put the link in the description where you can find these. Thank you.